Hello again, everyone and no one, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber. I'm still an absolute nobody. Cheers for that. In the last episode, we had a couple fun things happen. Most interestingly, the final, or perhaps final, destruction of the Ottomans at the hands of Saruhan, the White Hand, and Valachia. We also have the Reconquista initiated by Castile. Just Castile. He can take Granada and Tunis on his own. We also had Scotland uh, seizing the day, taking Cumbria and Northumberland before England could get there. We'll see if that helps him out in the future. And we also have Sweden having the hurt put on him by Denmark. I'm sure far more than that went on. This is actually my second time recording this video. Uh, I had episodes 3 through 6 recorded and then had an issue with my file formatting. So uh, here we are back in episode 3. Glad I was smart enough to uh, save the starts going all the way back here. But again, I digress. Let's get back to the action. As mentioned, the main war is definitely being uh, the Swedish-Danish war up here. Sweden able to fight back a little bit, was actually able to siege down the fort in Lund, but Denmark, uh, for his part, has sieged down not only Stockholm, but I believe there are some other forts in this area, yes? Yep, yep, Kalmara Fort, and has, oh, I'd call about half of Sweden's development sieged down. Sweden also, uh, with Norwegian separatists, at some point they came in and took Bohuslan and Smalin from the Norwegians. Novgorod uh, again took Finnmark. I believe that was last episode. Could have been uh, could have been two episodes ago. Regardless, they achieved their goal of getting more cold areas. That aside, still trying to not be talking about things that happened in uh, those now lost episodes. Though I will say the most exciting thing that happened during those, that I would be ecstatic if we saw again, was Naples getting a personal union over Byzantium. A different kind of purple coming to rule the Greek world. But again, we'll see if that happens. Back in this time, Constantine XI, he's 53 and has an heir here, Zoe Paleologos. Certainly not the first time uh, the power in the Byzantine lands has lay in the hands of an empress, or Basilissa, to, to use the uh, correct term. Over here, we do have Dulcadir and Karaman looking to finish off Eretna. Eretna, the, uh, probably the most unfortunate of the Beyliks. They do release with four provinces, if you're able to release them from the Ottomans. Uh, Sivas, Amasya, Bozok, and Kayseri. Uh, Kayseri also a Karamanese core. Karaman starts with it, but generally if you're going to be releasing your Etna, you have had to fight the Ottomans for it. Regardless, uh, that did not help them. They ended up on the wrong side of some alliance chains and now only have those two provinces. Venice dealing with some Achaean separatists over on Athens. Might have mentioned that in episode 2. Cannot remember. Again. Also have Croatian separatists over here on Dalmatia. Austria really put the herd on Venice. Took all of mainland Venetia here. Uh, would look to be well on his way toward uh, preventing the Shadow Kingdom. Except he's going to have to fight Naples for that. Naples, not currently a great power. Actually, pretty interesting great power list. Uh, Persia jumping up from the results of this war over Karakoinlu. Mentioned that last time, I think. Ming's still a great power at this point. Took a lot of this high development land from Wu. Right now at war with Yan, though. Austria, also a great power. The Emperor uh, doing pretty well for himself. France in fifth. He's done a fair bit of conquering. Took a bite out of Brittany last time. Got some development back. The Mamluks, who started in 1st, now in 6th, have the same amount of development as France. Odd that... Ah, there we go. So, yep, same amount of development as France for now, but probably going to get the Renaissance far later. 
England in 7th at 190, 179 if uh, you're taking the tech modifiers, and the Shogun Ashikaga holding on in 8th. And that appears to be the Castilian Civil War firing. Thankfully for them, they were able to complete the Reconquista before any of uh, that silliness happened. So Castile now having to deal with a bunch of noble rebels. No Iberian wedding quite yet. Aragon allied with Hungary, England, Portugal, and Lucca. Guessing that third alliance, the one with Portugal, might save them from Castile's wrath, at least for a little bit. Though should the Iberian wedding fire, that protection will be removed. Venice unable to do anything about any of these separatists. I'm guessing this will end up going to Achaea. They might be able to get down here and take this from the Croatian separatists, but uh, doubt Austria is going to be all that interested in letting them through their land. But you know, Venice is not known as a naval power for nothing. I'm sure they've got a few transports and could get some help from somebody a little more friendly toward them. Like, say... Uh, looks like they might be able to get it to access from Ragusa. Or the Separatists could just uh, walk on over into Donji Kraji and fight Montferrat instead. Montferrat, good friend, what are you doing? You are at war with Modena, Corsica, and Ragusa in the Mantuan conquest of Modena. And we're definitely looking uh, to make good on that. They do have Modena full occupied. Their uh, allies looking to get over onto Ragusa, and in fact, that stack that's been on Ragusa this entire time, a Mantuan stack. There are uh, flags on these units for a reason. Bosnia now feeling the hurt from the Croatian separatists, though their army stands a far better chance of actually taking them down. Oh, would you look at that! Venice does use its navy, comes down, and saves Athens from the Achaean Separatists. Spoiler alert, they did lose that to Achaea in the uh, the Lost Runs. The Great Horde here at war with Circassia and Trebizond. We see Trebizond's uh, little 3 stack, well, 2.8 stack, attempting to siege down the capital. If they have any manpower, they'll able to be able to start doing that. Yep, seems to be the case. So uh, right now we do have a siege of Saratov commencing. Don't see the Great Horde's army, but uh, I have an inkling that they might be back. And uh, oh, nah, it's just simultaneous sieges of each, other, of each other's capitals. Great Horde with a little bit tougher job this time. Trebizond a level three coastal mountain fort. Whereas Saratov, a level 1 step fort. Landlocked as well. Likely that Trebizond will finish that siege first, but... Then what? Uh, I don't think the Great Horde have any other level 2 forts, uh, unless you count Ryazan, which is actually a level 3 fort. And would probably be needed to uh, get Great Horde out of the war, so yeah. Valiant effort by Trebizond, but uh, not not to any avail, I don't think. Persia deciding that it's Ardalan's time to go. Ardalan actually allied to the Mamluks. Are they involved in this war? They are, but uh, not appearing to get any troops over there. Or rather, if they did get troops over there, Persia wiped them out. So uh, the little semi-fuchsia purple greatness that is Ardalan likely to be lost soon. Over in China, Ming doing a pretty decent job in this war against Yan. Is that the only participant? It is. Uh, cancel that. Ming actually kind of feeling the hurt. I'm guessing Ming might have lost their capital. Yes, they have, that being Nanjing. And Yan's capital, Beijing, not touched by the Ming. So we might actually have Yan seizing the Mandate of Heaven, which uh, would definitely leave Ming in the lurch. For now, still a great power, fifth now, but losing the Mandate would 
uh, probably take that down rather quickly. In India, we have Madurai being the main power in southern India. Vijayanagar with interesting territorial gains. Uh, they've taken two provinces which are completely separated from the rest of their nation. They still have Vijayanagar itself, but are now cut in half by Bahmanis, their ancient enemy. Not much to say about northern India, Jeanpur rather resting on its laurels after the bit of rapid expansion it did at the beginning. Punjab looking decent up in uh, northwestern India, and Kathiawar winning their wars over Gujarat. Gujarat generally a decent sized power in the uh, western Indian region, but giving back Kathiawar their named province, uh, Gujarat does have control of this at the start, giving that back to Kathiawar seems to have swung that in their favor. Down in eastern Africa, we do have Hadiya still around, independent, allied with Adal and Ajuran. Starts off as a vassal of uh, Ethiopia in a normal 1444 game. Hadiya also cutting off Kaffa from any sort of expansion, so Hadiya is going to have to go for Kaffa to get anywhere. Uh, I've done some Kaffa games recently, they're pretty fun to play. Uh, a nice little poke at there being the Kingdom of Coffee with their national traditions. One of which is plus 15% movement speed. Uh, also a quick shout out to Enerea. Just a fun sounding name. I, I love the sound of that name. Uh, they start as a one province minor down here uh, in the aptly or self-named province. And uh, in this game have taken their fellow OPM of Jean Giraud and Damo. Uh, Damo, a nation over here that also starts as an Ethiopian vassal, but of course that not the case. Uh, this scenario. Ming has absolutely no mandate, their tributaries being only Qi and Daiviet, down from even the five that we saw last time. Well, uh, that would uh, make some sense as to why Ming is losing this war. They're taking that plus 50% shock and fire damage. Yan apparently still reluctant to engage them though, or maybe just waiting for that occupation to finish. Uh, Yan does have only 2,000 fewer troops, and uh, there we go. They are now going for an engagement. Ming has a pretty decent general, but we can already see that that lack of mandate utterly destroying Ming. The Ming army crushed. The mandate of heaven will pass on. Byzantium allied now with Crete, Aiden, and Trebizond. The lines uh, definitely drawn over here between the Balix, as we see Saruhan allying itself with Karaman, Mentessa allied with Karaman Syria, Aretna allied with Syria, and they actually did not lose both provinces. I expected this to go uh, Amasya to Karaman and Sivas to Dulkadir, but uh, they apparently left him alive, and Syria is not going to be an easy opponent for them to face. And Dulkadir allied with Kandar Karaman. Kandar actually having a massive alliance chain, Aiden, Dulkadir, Karaman, and Syria, would not advise attacking them. Quite a change from usual EU4 when they generally fail to get any alliances before the Ottomans come knocking. Not the case in 1.19 though. Uh, I played a lot of Trebizond games in 1.19, a lot of Trebizond starts that is, and Kandar was generally pretty good at allying Dulkadir Karaman. Uh, it could be that those rivalries have become more likely than the alliances anymore. Who knows? Crimea has a navy out here blockading somebody, so they're either at war with Theodoro, or they're at war with Moldavia. I was going to say Zaporozhye, but uh, clicked that too quickly. Moldavia at war with Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod, the Timurids, Crimea, Kiev, and Imeritia. Nizhny Novgorod still a vassal of Kazan. And how did Moldavia provoke this, much, provoke this much ire? They did it by being allied to Muscovy. Muscovy going for a conquest of Kazan. Right now their army is actually in Nogai. But there they are, actually setting up that siege on Kazan. Perm doing their best to try to siege Nizhny Novgorod. 
Muscovy foregoing this siege to go in and uh, help with that. Dimitri appears to have been lost for Muscovy, but they do have an excellent replacement in the form of Yuri here. Sherezhmitev, uh, or Shermejev, I think that's more correct. A 3-4, very good in the early game. I mean, even a 0-4, good in the early game. Castile now appears to be... Ah, the Iberian Wedding has fired. That is what you call bad news for Portugal. They're still allied with Fez. But frankly, that's not going to protect them from Castile-Aragon. Again, Castile, probably the major power that loses the least... In terms of development, the Mamluks stay ahead of them in the early game, but it's, you know, Castile starts with 243 development in a usually U4 game. They started with, I think, 180 in this. They only had to take back Leon and Galicia, as opposed to some of their neighbors, you know, France still dealing with all the miners that were spat out from them, unable to take the most tempting one, Orléans, or Actually, France could really seize that rather easily. It appears that England is at war with France. England going for Scotland. Scotland with a three-star general must have gotten a champion of the Joust event. I think I mentioned him last time while uh, the Swedish-Danish war was going on. By the way, that war finishing, Denmark taking Ulfsborg, Tilhrad, Kalmar, uh, just those three. Regardless, this 5-4-5 uh, five, five will definitely go a long way toward alleviating the troop difference seen here. Apparently Aragon has a stack up here. Lord knows why. I'm guessing they were allied... Yes, they were allied with England before the Iberian Wedding fired. But now that stack pulled out of that war by the firing of the Iberian Wedding. Still, England having very good progress on the siege of Scotland's capital in Lothian. Desmond, this guy down here, helping out in this war. Thomond also with a three-star general, a 5-4-2-2. Those events for a 100 tradition general in the early game are excellent. Obviously, there are no nations that are going to have that high of army tradition at the start. Hold that thought. Byzantium going after Wallachia. Byzantium definitely with the advantage in troop number. But we've seen it. We've seen it to date. Wallachia, they're pretty crafty. Not only managed to break free of their initial starting position, but managed to sneak a couple provinces from Transylvania under Nitra's nose. And then attacking and almost full annexing Bulgaria while they were occupied with Hungary and Serbia. Well, rather, Serbia was under Bulgaria. Bulgaria actually getting that personal union. But uh, Serbia now a junior partner of Hungary. Just barely disloyal. Hungary looks like they'll be able to get them under control. Kiev occupied by Muscovy as part of this war on Kazan. Though, Muscovy still refusing to touch those enemies that are closest to home. Neither Kazan nor Nizhny Novgorod are easy forts to take. They're both level 3, and until Tech 14 of military, level 3 is the best fort you're going to get. Still, they are right there. There don't appear to be many enemy armies around to challenge them, and instead they're just kind of wandering around. Even Perm getting tired of their BS. Ardalan still alive as part of this war. Guaranteed by Iraq, which is uh, why we see this silver Iraq being painted green. Dulkadir also pouncing on them. Syria deciding to join the party as well. That's, uh, pretty rough for Iraq. 
don't think they'll be getting out of this one intact in any way, shape, or form. Frankly, if they're lucky, they might keep Baghdad. Maybe. Probably not all that likely. Coruscant being teamed up on by Afghanistan and Kiva. Is that it? Yep, that is the only war. Kiva also getting an ally in Yarkand. That's a good one for them to get. Yarkand's uh, kind of a sneaky power. I've seen them become a... Uh, not a great power, but I've seen them be the dominant force in Central Asia in quite a few of my campaigns. Regardless, Coruscant, without any allies, likely to lose quite a few provinces to the Kievan Afghanistani alliance. And here's some action down here in East Africa. Adal at war with pretty much all of the cops. Not seeing a big Ethiopian army. Ah, there they are. Ethiopia down here sieging Ajuran's capital in Merka. And Kaffa Medribari, more than happy to assist in that. Interesting how they're not attacking the main target of that war. That is a doll, correct? Yep, that is the... Oh, sorry. No, Hadia is the main defender. Kaffa initiating this war, going for a conquest of Sidamo. And, again, calling in basically every Coptic nation whose name isn't Alodia or Makuria. The army's pretty much switching places on each other's nations, but I would put my money on the cops in this one. In Central Africa, Congo's still kicking. We have Kikonja being the main power over in Eastern Central Africa. Uh, but they do have to contend with the forces of Kuba Luba, as uh, one might see in the dev... Uh, the dev multiplayer sessions. Kubalaba, a favorite of especially Bjorn B, who I believe is playing some amalgamation of them in the next dev clash. Coming up next Tuesday. Things looking fairly quiet in Central Europe. That appears to be Trier fighting Nuremberg. Alsus and Nuremberg in the Palatine Conquest of Alsace. Guessing that's going to go in favor of the Elector Palatine. The Teutons? Still looking like a crab? Uh, I was mistaken. They did take at least Traken and I think Podlakian. Yes, these two both taken from Lithuania. Lithuania has sustained territorial losses. Nitra going for Galicia Valenia. A valiant effort on the part of the Galicians to uh, attempt to counter siege, but 11 versus 3, there's only one way that can turn out. Moldavia still involved in this war. I had half expect them to have been half expected them to have been knocked out, but not the case. Denmark looking quite a bit healthier, still holding onto alliances with Riga, Pomerania, and Holland. Though their Pomeranian ally full sieged by Brandenburg. Just uh, looking to mop up his allies over in Frisia, or rather East Frisia, and Verden. And here we see Scotland sieging so much of England. Or maybe it's more Desmond. Regardless, they've taken the fort in marches. Some of the uh, occupations down here taken back by the fort in London and Scotland going back for their capital. But uh, could we see AI Scotland coming out on top? The world may never know. England opting to not go for the port fort. Desmond attacking Derbyshire. The Irish, uh, very brave, but... That stack is going to be wiped. Took out a amazing amount of morale for that. Scotland coming in to finish the job, though. That three-star general proving his worth.
took a minus two to uh, combat rolls because of the river crossing into the woods, but it doesn't matter when you've got Glenn Drummond, the 5452 battlefield medic. Their leader indulgent, though. Uh, that just re reduces trade efficiency. Pretty sure he's gonna, uh, old Glenn here might become a national hero on the same scale as William Wallace. Byzantium sieging Tirgaviste while Wallachia going after Edirne. Siege of Tirgaviste far ahead. It's looking like the Byzantines might be taking back some of the Eastern Balkans in this war. Yep, the Siege of Tirgaviste finished. The Byzantines moving up to 12 men and probably looking to defend Adrianople. Part of me wants to go in and uh, actually rename that for them, but the game really likes keeping it as Edirn. Noticing that uh, in previous patches, Macedonia, at the very least, has, uh, has been renamed. I, think it, I don't think it's actually named Selenik until after the Byzantines are destroyed or something along those lines. Nitra managing to draw the ire of perhaps a coalition? No. Nitra managing to draw the ire of Hungary and Hungary's massive, massive alliance chain. But just look at that. Hungary, Serbia, Bohemia, Austria, Naxos, Ragusa, Corfu, Silesia, and Florence. The Silesians doing fairly well at first, but... Hungary's got all these cores. Hungary wants them back. Uh, you can see that this is uh, one of the bugs that was fixed in uh, 1.21 with the AI picking up a massive amount of alliances. Hungary is generating no Diplo points at this point, I'm guessing. Uh, they do have Ladislaus the post Posthumous, and he has not died. Actually, surprisingly good stats for him. I think he usually starts as a 1 2 1. Regardless, uh, Hungary, I've seen, is generally the culprit here. They will be the AI nation to pick up an absurd amount of alliances. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight alliances to say nothing of their junior partner in Serbia. So that's nine Diplo slots taken up out of uh, presumably four, unless they've somehow managed to get a Diplo idea. Negatory. No wonder they're on Diplo Tech 3. All these patches have their issues. Uh, I have chosen 120 due mainly to the attitude towards enemies bug that's present in 1.21. For those of you who haven't experienced that, basically when you are looking to attack somebody and you're looking at their allies to see whether they'd be called in or not, generally there's an attitude towards enemies modifier there that's based on, you know, are they your rival? Are they outraged towards you? Uh, are they your ally? You know, if you're attacking somebody who's an ally of one of your allies, they get a minus 20 malice to attitude towards enemies because they don't particularly want to fight you, but they'll want to, you know, take the defensive war. Byzantium taking all of Bulgaria, by the way. Uh, and what happened in the 1.21 patch was that somehow that modifier got messed with and linked to aggressive expansion. So there was a malice to joining a defensive call to arms that had something to do with, I think they calculated it as double the aggressor's aggressive expansion with the, the nation that would be called in. So there was, uh, I, I was trying to do a CAFO run in 1.21 and uh, ran into that fairly early, attacked Warsongali, who was allied to Ajuran, and I had 26 AE with Ajuran, and he had a minus 52 malice to joining the war because of attitude towards enemies. Just... I felt like that was just a tad too, uh, too bad of a bug to deal with. So instead, we get to deal with the Hungarian pseudo-coalition bashing Nitra. Nitra. Gotta keep my pronunciation straight. Looks like Galicia Valenia might be uh, pulled out of the fire again. Hungary might be giving that back to them, or might even give it to Poland. Regardless, uh, I can't remember, in my last group of runs, the ones that were lost, Moldavia had taken these provinces. 
can't remember if they'd ended episode two with those, but uh, regardless, congratulations, Moldavia. You are bigger than uh, when you started. And I've managed to save the timer in time. That time? How many times can I say time in a sentence? Regardless, it is about that time. Thank you everyone for watching. I am Paragon Saber, and this has been The Great Car Partition. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.